Yeah, absolutely. I knew that if there was something I could see it, so... And we know it's 7 to 8 octaves. Okay. 7.9 octaves. It's about 1,000 feet below you. Welcome back to Solar Impulse TV, live from the Mission Control Center in Monaco. Bertrand Picard is t over 20 hours, 23 hours, 23 hours into his flight to the west coast of the United States, about a third of the way to Moffett Airfield in uh, Mountain View, California. Things are going very well. He's had some rest and a little bit of food, so all well in the cockpit. Now, it is Earth Day, as you may know, and here at Solar Impulse we thought it was important to draw awareness to a particular issue over in the Pacific, which is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And so we wanted to connect you with Boyan Slot. He's a young Dutchman, an entrepreneur, and he has started something called the Great Ocean Cleanup. We have an interview with him. He will actually chat with uh, Bertrand later at 18.15 UTC, or actually, correction, 18.15 local. Uh, and here is the interview I did with him earlier in the week so you can learn more about his project. Tell me about the Great Ocean Cleanup. What are you and your team trying to do? So at the Ocean Cleanup, uh, we're developing the first technology to rid the oceans of plastic. Um, so halfway between Hawaii and California, about a third of all plastics of all season oceans combined is concentrated in this one very large area. Um, and in the past, people had, um, came up with ideas to, to clean that up, but they were all based on vessels with nets, which would go out and start fishing for plastic. Um, this would, however, take about 79,000 years and many tens of billions of dollars uh, to clean up. So um, uh, then I wondered, well, these, these, co these currents, they, they rotate around, so why would you go through the oceans if the oceans can also move through you? So I came up with this passive system that's basically a long floating structure attached to the seabed um, which really acts like, a, like an artificial coastline there where there is no coastline uh, allowing us to, to intercept the plastic and concentrate it and let the, basically let the ocean clean itself and using computer models we've now been able to determine that using one of those systems deployed for 10 years about half the Great Pacific Garbage Patch can be cleaned up. You were quite young when you sort of came across this problem and started getting interested in everything. Did your did your parents ever suggest, well, maybe why don't you start at something you know a bit closer to home? Big problems need big solutions, and um, yeah, I think the the only way to to fix these things um, fast enough to be able to to um, uh, to be faster than the, the the spread of these problems is to do you know, large scale technological um, advancements. What was the most sort of shocking thing in your mind that you pulled out of the ocean last summer that you just were, or is it some ways the tiny things that you don't see? Because I guess the plastic can really mm. break apart, and that's almost more depressing. Uh, so one of the um, the uh, major findings or initial findings of the the research is that. Uh, really most of the, the mass of the plastic is still in the big stuff. People thought it was all microplastics, but now using new measurement techniques, we've been able to find that actually that's just a few percent of the, the total amount of mass. So, but the small pieces, they used to be big objects when they entered the oceans in the 50s or 60s, but due to UV light and indeed breaks down to smaller pieces and then they become more dangerous because they end up in the food chain and they also become more difficult to, to clean up. So. Um, so on one side it, it means we're not too late, but on the other side it means it's sort of a ticking time bomb and if we would wait too long, even if the, the tap would be closed, the amount of microplastics in the oceans may increase uh, orders of magnitude um, if, we, if we don't clean this up. So in a way cleanup is prevention as well. But in terms of um, specific objects, we've seen many weird things, think about like, tiny toy soldiers, up up to things like uh, well, toy guns, uh, astroturf, uh, 
what else? Uh, golf balls, combs, toothbrushes, um, umbrella handles. Um, sometimes you see just very weird things. So like every, every sample we open, it's you know, it's a whole new story. And uh, I think that's the only thing um, that keeps these um, people in the lab motivated because, uh, yeah, it's quite a quite a tough job to, to count these millions of pieces by hand. We know what Bertrand and Andre are going to be doing this, this summer and, uh, you know, and that they're completing the round the world. What, what's your summer looking like? The next major milestone is indeed to, to uh, deploy the first uh, prototype of our system, which will be in the water in, in June this year. Um, furthermore, we're completing um, the research that we started with last year to find out how much plastic is in this Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So what we did last year was we crossed this area with 30 vessels at the same time, uh, taking more measurements in three weeks' time than in the 40 years uh, preceding, uh, really allowing us to, to map this area for the first time. Um, so right now we have these people here in the lab who are um, analyzing these samples piece by piece. So we'll probably have some conclusions uh, on that later this year. Um, and um, yeah, and also we are continuing to, to, to build the organization. We're always looking for uh, more great engineers and um, yeah, and hopefully that should put us on track to start the largest cleanup in history by 2020. AstroTurf and golf balls, two things I don't think you're supposed to find in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. As I said, Bertrand is probably flying over this uh, Pacific garbage patch as we speak. That is, uh, again, was uh, Boyan Slot, the founder of uh, Ocean Cleanup, Dutch, young Dutchman. He started dreaming big at 16 years old, uh, something, something to aspire to for all of us. Um, as I said, he will be chatting with Bertrand at 1620 UTC. See, I've got the notebook to make sure I get the times right this time. 1620 UTC, that is 1820 local here in Monaco, and they will be having a great chat, so make sure to tune in for that. The next show from me will be our energy neutral morning show. That will be at 1700 UTC or 1900 local, so 7 p.m. local. And uh, during that show, we will have some more, uh, some more from from our from Solve, from uh, from Covestro, from Boyan, and uh, as well as the other members of the team here. And one other thing I should mention is Bertrand will be speaking to Ban Ki Moon later, so that's something else to look out for uh, on Solar Impulse TV. Thanks for watching.